to change the lead right here. Jimmy Spencer, he's now the bottom of the racetrack right here. They got Hermie Sapper out there, number two car. Oh, oh, all right, Ray can get in the corner right here, Darrell. Right around the bottom. Got to let him go. Got to fall in behind him, try to pass him back down here somewhere. Come back under him sometime. Just let him go right now. Oh, he hit him. Bush got under him and muscled Jimmy Spencer. You don't see that often. Spence is hanging on for dear life. Get it up. Get it up. You're right. Outside. Outside. Well, big outside. Big outside. Outside. Message received. Here it is again. Like I said, get back up under him and uh, there he goes. Many guys will save a car like that. Ooh, a bumper for a bumper. And not many guys would go up against Jimmy Spencer like that. We look at the tail of the tape of today's matchup here. Jimmy Spencer weighing in at 230 pounds. Jimmy, I never forget. He never forgets against uh, Kurt Boom Boom Bush, who has a slight disadvantage when it comes to height and weight. Looks like a butterfly. It stings like a bee. Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, Elliot Sato, Rusty Wallace, and now Kurt Busch is a first-time Winston Cup winner at Bristol. You have dreamed about this for a long time, my friend. Congratulations. You finally reached it. What's it feel like? This is unreal. This is absolutely unbelievable. I just have to thank the whole Jack Roush organization for making that swap, giving me Jimmy Fennick, Sean Parker, this whole group of guys. This was awesome. We had pitch strategy. I don't know why the eight pitted, and Jimmy Spencer forgot about what he did to me at Phoenix last year. This was an awesome run for Rubbermaid. Sharpie on the car, a million dollar offer. You can't get any better than this. This is Bristol. Hopefully come back in the fall race and do a double at the Sharpie 500. I hear what happened between you and the winner, Kurt Busch? Oh, he just smashed it in the back bumper of my target, for, uh, my target car, but uh, it had a big bullseye back there, and I guess he couldn't see too good, and he ends up winning the race that way, but... There's a lot of things you can and can't do, and one thing you can't do is just beat and bang with people and knock them up out of the way, especially racing for the lead. And, uh, you know, I, I, I notice a lot of guys don't do that, and they're, they're the Winston Cup champions, like myself and Gordon did earlier in the race, and I really admire him the way he raced me, and I raced him. And some guys have to learn. They just have to learn the hard way. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. What a crash. It's Kurt Busch with a hard crash. Man, he was flying. He was running very, very well. Looks like he might have tested that safer barrier one more time. He was in 17th place at the time of the accident. <laughs> After starting the race back in 38th. Boy, he has pounded the wall with the left side of that Ford. And great news there. Oh, he's mad at somebody. Yes, he is. He's hot. angry at somebody. I think he's got his weapon. Oh, no, it's his hat. <laughs> He's going down and just tell somebody when they go by that he's angry. All right. Survey says. <laughs> Who's he racing with there? We're here, and it's a red car. Expensive. Yeah. And he just booted him out of the way. Wow, that's not good. But here you got a guy coming, okay, he passed him clean, and you can see the car was slowing up in front of you. I still think Kurt's going to let that one go over too easy. <laughs> well, Kurt Busch has just stepped out of the infield care center. Kurt, what do you think happened out there? Oh. Just been having troubles with turn three this weekend. In qualifying, we spun, and that put us in a bad position. Back there with the decrepit old has-beens, I guess. It's just been a tough way. I mean, when he calls out what he's going to do and then actually goes out there and does it, uh, I mean, I guess he's a never was is really the term that we need to bring up today. But uh, real unfortunate, we had the car to beat. We were going to the front, Rubbermaid, very sorry about it. We'll go back and work at it next week. I mean, it's, it's tough when you bump somebody at 100 miles an hour, and then when they come back and bump at 200 miles an hour. So... If, if that's the way that Jimmy Spencer is, we know how he is, and we're not going to play like that. Oh, touch, touch. Hit, hit. <laughs> yeah, they don't forget, do they? Oh, nobody does in this business. Yeah, I'm not very good at being bad. I was trying to flatten the seventh car fender, and I got mine. I needed to be further forward on his car. And he just showed on TV. Just missed by about an inch of being 
Charges only count. I should play overshoes and hand grenades. And I don't really want to play either with that clown. Kurt Busch and Jimmy Spencer kind of duked it out on the racetrack, and that flowed over to the post-race activities. Jimmy actually bumped the number 97 as they entered the garage area, and then sources tell me Jimmy got out of the car, approached Kurt Busch, and actually punched Kurt Busch. Authorities are looking into it, as is NASCAR. Kurt, we've seen the video, we've heard the audio. What were your intentions when you made contact with Jimmy Spencer at Michigan? I mean, what happened last week was an assault after the race, and what had happened leading up to that in the past was I've got two wrecked race cars out of it, and I don't respect Jimmy Spencer. And therefore, what happened over the audio but during the race and then after the race was because of the fact I don't respect him. I never expected him to cross over that line. And so with having two wrecked race cars, that's why I don't respect him. And then having everybody else in the field, you know, I respect everybody out there. That's something I wouldn't do to anybody else except him. And so the things that had happened afterwards, obviously he was agitated. He came up to my window, and I'm not going to back down to him. I never thought he'd cross that line. So that's what happened. You know, what we've got to do now is, is move forward. And I chose to accept my probation and to help this thing move forward and put this behind us. And then what can happen in the future from this is I'm still going to be the aggressive driver on the track that wants to go to the front, but I don't want to wrinkle anybody's fenders doing it. I'm a guy that's, that's a clean racer, and I know how to do it. What did happen in the garage area after the race? I think I stated what happened there. He came up, hit me in the rear, and then he came up to my window and punched me. Are the penalties enough to make this whole feud ever with, do you think? I believe so. I mean, it, it's tough to say what's going to happen on his side, but on my side of it with the probation, I think we can move forward. We're going to accept it with grace with dignity and show the honesty that I have within my organization and to all these other competitors out here that I can drive my race car under control and, and hopefully put on a good show doing it. I know Ricky Craven liked it. I know Johnny Benson did last year racing him. Just going for wins. That's what it's about. Can you put this behind you and win tonight, Kurt? We're going for it. I mean, we put a lap down in qualifying to be fifth on the board and just trying to make sure that we do one thing at a time this weekend. And Now it's one lap at a time. you got to stay ahead at this track. You've got to make sure that you give the crew chief the right adjustments and he makes the right calls to give us the right tires and right fuel. We'll see what we can get. I'm happy to be here, and I'm looking to put this behind me. He won here in March, going for the season sweep at Bristol, Bill. And a lot of people are about to go. Oh, turn one, Sterling Marlin has crashed. Second place car. And the caution flag is out. Man, this is unbelievable. I don't think the TV show Survivor's got anything on these guys. No. This could be the last one running tonight. Sterling Marlin was running second. He went off of the turn one. Uh-oh. He's going to get some help from Kurt Busch. Sure did. And I'll tell you what, when you get hit going into a corner... That's not a whole lot you can do. That's the worst. Watch here as he goes down to turn one. Gets in the back of Sterling. When you're turning down into the racetrack, goes, and you're already loose, getting in, I'm talking about there's not a whole lot you can do to save it. Final quarter. And we'll see what kind of reception he gets in victory lane. It's checkered flag number four for 2003. Kurt Busch takes the Sharpie 500 at Bristol. Here he comes. Let's listen. Kurt Busch, the winner of the Sharpie 500. 